A demon recently walked into my room and I'll be telling the story of how exactly that happened. Also, I'll be telling another story of a demon encounter that I had when I was with two of my friends in downtown Fort Worth. So on this video, I'll be telling those two stories. But most importantly, I don't just talk about demons. I'm gonna talk about how you can overcome demons in your life. Now, whether you're a Christian or non-Christian, I'm gonna be teaching us tonight about the truth of can a Christian be possessed? Can a Christian be taken over by a demon? Or can a Christian just be oppressed? So if you wanna find out that answer, I'll be sharing that at the end of this video as well. And I'll be praying for everyone because the reality is that Jesus has come to set us free and he's given us the keys of victory. Amen, period. So anyways, I'll start out um, the story and then I'll share with you guys a couple of scriptures. So basically this was around four or five months ago. And um, I remember telling you guys a little bit about this on a prior live stream. But while I was praying for this Bible study, the Lord put it on my heart to share that story with you guys. Also, I was going through my Bible, just um, turning the pages through it. And a scripture that Jesus talked about demons happened just as I was scrolling through my Bible. It wasn't anything in particular. But as I was praying about this video, like I always do, a scripture literally popped up as I was just scrolling through my Bible. And I thought it was definitely not a coincidence that God told me to share the scripture with you guys. So again, be sure to stick around. So around four months ago, I went to bed. And I'm also going to be really vulnerable with you guys here in this video because I need you guys to understand that I am not a perfect person. I know it seems like I'm like the like a, the best Bible study person and I'm like always on fire for God and everything in my life is perfect. But the reality is like I struggle with things just like you guys do. I struggle with social media. I struggle with friends at times and feeling um, certain ways and, and feeling up and down and going through those different things. But anyways, four or five months ago at the time, I had actually fallen into this thing where I'd be on Instagram or even TikTok and the devil would be sending me these thirst traps and these wrong images that I found myself getting more and more into. And I'll just be vulnerable with you guys. I didn't cut it out in my life like I should have. Now, I wish I could have said that I put those images away, that I like was really quick to get them away from me like I should have, but I let them kind of stay in front of my eyes for too long. And I kind of opened the door, not kind of, I opened the door for the enemy to enter into my life. And so what would happen is when I would go to bed like late night, like 2, 3 a.m., I would try to go to bed early, but I would get these thoughts and I would get these feelings and I would just have these really weird nights. And so fast forward probably to uh, when I was, it was like 2 or 3 a.m. around four months ago. And I remember going to bed at around 12 p.m. And when 2 or 3 a.m. Um, came around, I sensed this figure walk into my room. And I, the only way I can describe it was it, it felt like a, a woman. And she got and she like walked right up into my room. And I literally, I, it was so real. Now I had my eyes closed. But it's kind of like when you know your parent walks in or your friend or like your sister and like you may not even be able to like see them, but you can just kind of like feel them. So as I was lying down on my bed, I just knew that like someone was in that room and I knew it wasn't God because I knew that it wasn't peace. And so, again, I'm not telling you guys this story to scare you. I'm telling you guys this story because it's important you know the truth about demons. So as I'm lying on my bed, I just knew that someone was, so, was there. In fact, I knew it was so real that I woke up and I ran straight into my roommate Ola's room. Now, if you guys know Ola, he's amazing. He's my 39-year-old black Nigerian friend. <laughs> he's great. We went to Bible school together. And when I need someone to pray with me, I go to Ola. <laughs> and so I ran into Ola. And this was like 3 a.m. in the morning. Ola's dead asleep. I run into Ola's room and I'm like, Ola, get up. We need to pray. He's like, buddy, buddy. He always says, buddy, buddy. He's like, why do we need to pray? And I said, Ola, there's a girl in my room. And the reason I said it was a girl was because I actually believe what I had allowed into my life was Christians cannot be possessed. I'll give you guys a hint. They cannot be possessed, but we can be opening doors in our life for the enemy to get in. And actually what I believe it was, was what some would call a spiritual spouse or a, a demon that was trying to enter into my room and more importantly, enter into my, enter into my thought life. And anyways, I said, Ola, we need to pray. And so instead of being afraid, instead of running outside the house and calling the cops or calling the fire department because uh, someone was in my house, instead of doing those things, we responded the right way, which was we prayed. And we didn't just pray like a little bit. We prayed in tongues. We hid it in the spirit. And also we prayed in Jesus name and it was just, it was something simple. And, and what we did was we said in Jesus name, father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus over this house. God, I thank you for the blood of Jesus over my room. And we just prayed that. And, uh, I was so thankful for Ola because he was so ready to go and he was able to just partner with me. And anyways, I, I ended up going to bed and I slept that night and I believe the demon left after that, um, encounter. However, the reason I'm telling you guys this story is because 
I want to emphasize, first of all, I want to normalize spiritual things to you guys. A lot of people think demons aren't real. A lot of people don't know whether angels or demons are real. I will tell you, demons and angels are both real, but they're not what we need to be afraid of. In fact, they're not what Hollywood has taught us that has taught them to be has taught them to us. Listen to the scripture that Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 and verse 18. This was after the demons were cast out. Jesus said this, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Verse 19, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. And then he said in verse 20, not withstanding in this rejoice, but that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The reason I'm telling you guys this story is because I wanted to encourage you guys. If you struggle at all feeling even like you're having demonic attacks while you sleep, or maybe you're watching things, or maybe you feel like you've opened a door in your life to the enemy, I want to make this video to encourage you that there is freedom, that you don't have to be afraid, that you don't have to be a coward. You don't have to think that you're somewhat less of a person because you struggle with a certain area of your life. But in fact, one, we're all in this together. And number two, we got the name of Jesus Christ. It's the name above every other name. I want to tell you guys my other story, and then I want to give you guys the key to victory. So if you want to learn the key to victory, stick around here on this video. Good job not leaving yet. So my other story was I was with Colton and Nick and we were downtown and we were just preaching the gospel downtown. And as we're preaching, um, everything went really well. We were able to minister to people. In fact, by the end of the night, around 15 or 20 people had gathered around hearing the word of God. It went really well. Then we went and hung out with friends. We had a campfire. We had a worship session. It was so amazing. And we're coming back to the car. Colton had locked his car before we left, but we come back to the car and the car is unlocked and it's running. So we don't know how this happened. Well, actually, we do know how this happened, but the car was running, but he locked it, right? So we get up to the car and he gets in the car and the car's running. And on the radio is this metallic demonic music that he never puts his car to. So his radio was not set there. He was listening to something completely different. But what had happened was his car was locked. Someone had gotten in his car and was playing demonic metallic music. Here's the weird thing. He had valuables in his car, but none of them were stolen. So most likely what happened was the devil was so angry at what we were doing preaching downtown that a demon had to get in his car and put demonic music. But after Colton told us this story, I mean, we were right there. We saw it happen. After he told us this story, we literally cracked up laughing because you know you're doing something for God when the devil attacks. You know you're doing something for God when you have demonic encounters. And that's exactly the truth I want to tell you guys. If you have struggled at all with any of these encounters, the reason is because... God has such an amazing plan for you, such a magnificent plan for you. The devil wouldn't worry about you if you didn't matter. The devil wouldn't worry about you if you were just something little. Do you think Logan Paul worries about a 10-year-old fighter trying to up in his fighting game? No, he doesn't. Logan Paul worries about who? Floyd Mayweather, someone that is serious. The devil is worried about you. The devil is worried that you will accomplish God's plan for your life. The devil is worried that you're going to do what God told you to do. And so that's why he's working his very best to send you all the temptation, to send you all the different paths, to send you all these different attacks all these different encounters to make you afraid. But I have good news for you. We have the name of Jesus Christ. We do not need to be afraid. We do not need to fear. Because as real as the demons are, let me tell you, the blood of Jesus is more real. As real as all these encounters and all these attacks are, let me tell you, the name of Jesus is more real. And I want to share with you guys that key to victory. Listen carefully. Woo, we're getting, we're getting fired up. And I know a lot of people are saying, Gabe, now you're talking crazy. Listen, Jesus Christ himself said that we as Christians will cast out devils. Now, I'm not telling you that Christians can be possessed, okay? If you're a Christian, if you believe on the name of Jesus, if Jesus is Lord, you are not able to be possessed, okay? You don't need to cast a devil out of a Christian. However, you can be oppressed and you must understand that because we must cut off the doors to the devil in our life. You say, Gabe, how do you cut off the doors to the devil in your life? Good question. Well, if there's any part of your life that you feel is drawing you closer and closer to sin, you need to identify that trigger. So whether it's a movie that you watched, maybe it's a video that you watched, maybe it's someone you follow on Instagram, maybe it's uh, an app that you have on your phone, maybe it's a website, identify that trigger. And I'm making this video to tell you, you're not the only one going through this. Here I am, a Christian, half of my life, a Bible school graduate, and yet I still am, have areas of my life that I need to watch over too, because we're all in this together. We're all in this together. Okay, anyways, listen to the scripture. By the way, if I look like a burnt tomato, it's true. I could probably go out for veggie tales and play Bob the Tomato because your boy is burnt here in Texas, okay? Glad it's not as hot as hell. Let me tell you, hell would be hotter, but Texas is halfway to hell, period. Okay, I don't know why I said that, but it was just a little funny, little tidbit. Okay, I wanna share with you guys the key to victory. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
Okay, Philippians. And the reason why I'm laughing, the reason why we can have joy about all these things is because I, I really believe God is telling me to tell you this now. The reason why maybe the past couple months, even maybe this past year was so tough for you, that you felt like you were just attacked so many times is because God has such an amazing plan for you. The devil isn't worried about people that, that aren't important. The devil isn't worried about people that, that don't matter. The devil is worried about those who do matter. And what plan, what magnificent plan could God have and store for your life that the devil would be working his very hardest to derail it? I'm telling you, God has such an amazing plan for you. As the amount of sand in the seashore, so are God's thoughts for you. Do not quit. Do not give up. This video is your sign. Listen to the scripture. Philippians chapter two. This is, this is the key to victory. Listen to this. Listen, we must understand we already have the victory. You don't need to beat the devil. You don't need to beat demons. We already have been given the victory. We already have been given freedom. We already have been given everything according to life and godliness. Listen to the scripture, Philippians chapter two. And in verse uh, seven, uh, verse eight, it says, no, verse nine, talking about Jesus. If you have your Bible, turn there with me. Philippians chapter two, verse nine. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of things in heaven, of things in earth and under the earth, that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Listen to that scripture one more time, verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven, earth, and under the earth, that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, now that we've read that scripture, my question for you is, can a Christian still struggle with demonic attacks? Listen, you will struggle with things as long as you let them. The Bible says that we must submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Now, some people will be like, well, Gabe, you know, you never know. You never know while well, he's finna flee. No, he will flee if you resist him. Listen to the scripture in James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And if you guys want to do me a huge favor, everybody smash that like button right now. If we all hit that like button, this video will get out to more people on the suggested page, and they'll just hear about Jesus Christ. Don't do it for me. Do it for God. If you'd like, you don't have to, but it's just your way of sharing if you just hit the like button for me real quick. Good job, everybody. Keep hitting that like button. And let me share with you guys this next scripture in James chapter four. Now, if you have your Bible, turn there with me. It's really important you guys look at scriptures with me together. Amen. <laughs> James chapter four. It says this in verse, whew, James chapter four and verse six. It says, God gives more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. Verse seven, submit yourselves therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you. Verse eight, draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Cleanse hands, sinners, purify hearts, double-minded. When this demonic attack happened to me, instead of running, instead of being afraid, instead of calling my mother, which I guess I could have done, but instead of doing all those things, I chose instead to run back to the word of God and my friend. And we prayed in tongues that night. Now, if you don't pray in tongues, I highly encourage you, pray in tongues. If you wanna learn how to pray in tongues, I've linked some videos down in the description down below for you. But I need you to understand that greater is he that is living in you than he that's in the world. It's not even a struggle with demons. It's just them trying the very best, but it doesn't even have to be a struggle. It's simple. The way to get the victory is, is literally this thing right here. Are you ready? If you wanna get the victory over demonic attacks in your life, it's this. Submit to God. Do you want to know how to resist the devil? The Bible says submit to God first. What does that look like? Well, if you're submitting to God, you're going to listen to what he tells you to do. Don't just think that you can pray one night and all of your problems will be fixed. Instead, God wants to guide you on a daily basis. Now, remember, none of us are perfect. And so if you've fallen down before, don't be discouraged. Instead, be encouraged because God is speaking to you even now. He's showing you doors that you got to shut. He's showing you areas of your life that you can allow him into. And the way to submit to God is to lay down yourself. I don't know how many times throughout my day I tell God all the time, I say, God, I repent. God, I repent for thinking that way. God, I repent for looking at that. As an act of my will, I loose that from my soul. And as you go throughout your day, you can do all those things because you know that God is constantly forgiving you and he's showing you areas of your life you repent from. Here's the thing. As you repent, those doors will be shut to the devil and they'll be open to God because you want your life to be open to God and shut to the devil. Amen? Amen. I want to read that scripture to you guys one more time and then I want to pray for all of you. Listen to this. James chapter four and verse seven says, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Verse eight, draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Cleanse hands, sinners, purify hearts, double-minded. Listen to this. If there was a restaurant for all 524 of us tonight, let's say it was Golden Corral, and I invited every single one of you there. I gave you an invitation. I said, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. 
and you had a chance to go. Let's say you lived one minute away. All you had to do was walk. How many of us tonight would go into that restaurant? I don't know about you, but I definitely would go into that restaurant. Now, if 10 people tonight, after I sent out all the invites, if 10 people tonight said, well, Gabe, I really wanted food, but uh, you didn't provide me the food. What would I say to you? I'd be like, honey, boo-boo, you dumb, dumb. You should have what? Came to the restaurant. You should have what? Filled up your plate. That is what God says to every single one of us. We blame God. We say, God, you didn't answer my prayer. God, you didn't do this for me. God, you didn't set me on fire. God, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. And God's literally telling you, he's saying, honey, boo-boo, get your plate full. This right here is the golden corral of God's word. This right here is how you can get full of God. And so it's not you waiting for God just to move. And it's not you just waiting for God to answer your prayers. God has already answered your prayers. God has already moved. God has already given us the victory in Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but if you gave $50 to your friend and then your friend told you, if you handed $50 to your friend and then your friend told you and said, well, I guess I just don't have $50. I guess I'm never going to get it. How would that make you feel? You'd be like, bro, here's the $50. Just take it. But what if the other friend said back to you and they said, well, I guess I just don't have $50. It's like Winnie the Pooh. Uh, Eeyore, he's always, oh, I guess my life's not going good. I'm just depressed. Nothing's working. I don't know where God is. That's what Christians be saying nowadays. Ain't nobody got time for that, okay? It's time you respond to God's word. It's time we take God at his word. It's time we actually believe that Jesus died and rose again. Oh, hallelujah. I want to pray with all you guys. Thank you guys for sticking along till the end of this video. We're having fun here. Also, I'm burning up. I'm sweating up a storm out here. <laughs> out here in this car. I need to open up my car door. Yeah, we need to, oh, we need to open that up. Father God, I pray right now for everybody watching this video. Lord, I pray you'd reveal wisdom to them right now. Father, I pray you'd speak to them right now. Lord, I pray you'd speak to them how they can open up doors to you and they can shut doors to the devil in their life, Lord. Lord, I pray you'd reveal areas. Lord, I pray you'd reveal triggers, triggers that have allowed these demons to, to oppress them. And right now, in Jesus' name, anyone under the sound of my voice that doesn't know you yet, Jesus, I pray they know you tonight. I pray they'd make a choice for you right now. I pray that they would know that they are loved, that you have such an amazing plan for them. Lord, I pray that they would take you at your word because God, you are faithful. I pray for their mothers, their fathers, their brothers, their sisters. I pray you'd send labors across their path. Father, I pray you'd reveal to them how to love others, how to bring others into your kingdom because Jesus, your gospel is the most important thing we have. In your mighty name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. <laughs> I love you guys so much. I have a free Zoom for anybody that wants to come. If you want to come, I'm going to show you guys a Zoom code and you can come. But if you're just now um, about to tune off, off this video, again, I just encourage you, if you want to learn how to pray in tongues, if you want to learn how to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, how to hear God's voice, those videos are down in the description below. Also, next Friday, I'm doing just a Zoom with the Patreon supporters. Because of the Patreon supporters, I'm able to do this full time and make even more videos for God. Right now, there's only nine people on the Patreon. So if you want to be on a Zoom with just nine or ten people, get to meet me, get to talk with me, and um, direct DM access, that Patreon is down below. I couldn't do without your support. If you don't want to join the Patreon, don't feel like you have to. If you just want to pray or just hit the like button on this video, that is how you can help spread the gospel today. I love you guys so much. God loves you. And